Let's make a rubber hose animation. One of the most important parts is the style of the character art before it even moves. Take a look at some of the design elements common to those good old school characters. Bodies tend to be easy shapes stacked together, like circles and ovals. Humans may have more complex bodies. And humans also have very caricatured head shapes. In general, go for curves instead of sharp points. And simplify, simplify, simplify. You can see my people sketches are getting close, but they're not quite there yet. You'll have to draw your character a couple of times to get used to the style and try different ways of drawing body parts until they look like they belong in the 30s. Over here I've done the show mascot scribbles in rubber hose style, and just look at how easy it is to go too far away from the style. Adding the hair tuft at the top immediately makes the tune too modern, as does the triangular shaped nose versus a circle. Once you have a character design, it's time to start animating. You don't get to be lazy with rubber hose animation because if you truly want to use the style, you have to draw each picture by hand. No puppets and no tweens. I mean, you can cheat if you want, but you're going to get Night in the Woods instead of Cuphead. Start with something simple like a looping bounce, because rubber hose characters are usually bouncing to the music. Begin by drawing the character at the top of the bounce. Now draw the character at the bottom of the bounce. Copy the first picture and paste it to the end. Then expand your bounce frames to where you like the timing of it. Create an empty frame halfway between the top of the bounce and the bottom of the bounce. Draw the middle position in that frame. Copy your drawing and paste it into the middle of the upward movement to complete the cycle. With only three drawings, you can make a rubber hose loop. It's easy to change up the timing a bit. To make the loop super smooth, draw the drawing halfway between each of these poses. That means in the end you'll have five pictures for the loop. Even if you're not making a loop, use the method I just explained for drawing actions. Draw the first key pose, draw the next key pose, and then start making pictures in between those poses to connect them. You can see how it works in this Flip the Frog cartoon. Pose, move to next pose, stop, move to next pose, stop, and on and on and on. A note for experienced animators, rubber hose animations don't use much easing. Spacing is fairly linear even during crazy movements, so to make up for not having any easing, everything is animated on ones, and characters stop for three frames at resting positions before moving on. So those are the basics, but the great thing about rubber hose animation is how trippy it is. It focuses heavily on visual gags and silly, wriggling noodleness. Let's make a shocked expression. Draw an exaggerated pose. I'm gonna do the heart pounding out of the chest bit. You can do bug eyes, flailing arms and legs, all sorts of crazy things. Once you've finished that, do a slightly different redraw of that same position. Loop those two pictures and you have the comical rubber hose surprise effect. Next, take your default art and draw another frame getting ready to move into the extreme pose you just made. Add one in-between frame. Here's what that looks like. Feel free to keep going from here. While you're drawing, keep in mind the following tips about rubber hose animation technique. First of all, no smear frames. While spin lines existed, and to some extent multiples, smear frames weren't really invented until the 40s. No subtle movements or subtle acting. Use big, exaggerated actions. Everything in rubber hose style flows with lots of in-betweens. For lip sync, very articulate mouths, and they can get very big and be wide open circles. Transitions between the mouths are smooth, so there's lots of frames. It's pretty different from modern lip sync. And of course, sometimes there's no lip sync at all. Now, dear, didn't I tell you to go away? And lastly, be crazy. Go for surrealism. Definitely don't aim for realism with these kinds of cartoons. Next, I'm going to polish up this bounce cycle. So, first of all, the character's outlines should be slightly thicker than any detail lines. And in this case, you do want to include any main body pieces in the thicker line, even if they're inside the character. If you've already drawn your character, you can go around the main lines again with a thicker brush. In my case, I'm working from a sketch, so I'll do the thick outline and use the thin one wherever it's needed. And there's not a lot of detail lines on this character, so I don't use it very much. Next, add color, or stick to grayscale. For maximum authenticity, don't use gradient fills, only solid fills. Every area of color should be surrounded by a black outline. Now you can add a background. Ideally, you would make the background by hand with watercolor or acrylic paint. I slapped in an old digital painting. Tweak the color settings a bit, and I'll add a shadow. 
For the final step, the problem with drawing digitally like this is the line texture of an inked paper drawing is, well, a bit more textured. So to roughen up the animation, apply a film grain texture over the cartoon. You might have to skip this step if you only use drawing programs and don't have video editing software. If you're doing the texture, choose Multiply or Overlay as your blending mode, depending on the feel you want. That is how you make a rubber hose animation. If you're interested in more animation tutorials, browse through the links in the description below or visit the Scribble Kibble website. Have fun animating! <laughs>